Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to be installing all the solar equipment. What I usually like to do before I install about $4,000 worth of solar equipment is install the front curtain so that anybody walking by doesn't see what I have in here and get tempted to steal it. To install a curtain, I use this track, which will go right here. And I use these curtains that you get on Amazon. So the first thing we need to do is just take a measurement from here to here and then unravel the curtain track and cut that down the sides and we can use the miter box with the metal cutting blade. So the track kit comes with these brackets right here. So we're going to set these right on the front of the line. I think before I put this in I'll put a little bit of the carpet covering right there and right there. Of course, I'm using my angle drill bit again to get in here. So once you have all the brackets up, you can just start putting these rollers on one by one. I use about 10 of them. these little clips that I attach to the rollers that will hold the curtain up. These clips are not included in the track kit, but I have a separate link for them. So these curtains are really good. They're insulated, so they're going to keep all that hot air that comes in from the windshield. And they're also blackout curtains, so they won't let any light through. So they're going to need to be altered. I'm going to need to take a foot off the bottom and you can see they have these little loops here. Once you take a foot off the bottom, this will sit nice and flat and perfect. You can do that at a dry cleaner or a tailor or if you have somebody with a sewing machine. Now I'm just getting everything laid out where I'm going to be setting it up. And I've cut some pieces of plywood because I need to box in the wheel well here. Now that I have this all together, we'll give it a coat of paint and then we can put it in. I can take a few screws and go right into the plywood on the floor and in through this way and that'll attach it. Okay, I have this installed now, it's all screwed in. So next thing I need to do before I put the top on is insulate in here. Pretty important over the wheel well to have some good insulation. And if you remember from when I did the spray foam insulation episode, I saved what I had left in the spray foam. I remember I said if you leave the tip on, you should be able to reuse it. So I can pop off that old tip now, put the new one on, and we'll see if it works. I think I finally decided on a layout. I'm going to put the three batteries like this and I'll have the charge controller here, the inverter here, negative bus bar go there. So that should work out nicely. I think uh, putting the batteries like this is going to take the least amount of space. So I just need to build like a little box for them to kind of be held in place. And that way I could still put the water heater over here. Okay, so I'm gonna set the box right here and screw it into the floor and to the wall here. Before I do that, I'm gonna lay these two tie downs around the box. So I haven't screwed it in yet, but this is how it'll go. And then I'll uh, just cut the excess of this off here. Yeah, this is locked in pretty tight. So now I can uh, put the batteries in and I'm going to put them in upside down so that the positive is closest to the equipment. So actually before I put the batteries in, I'm going to cut some of this thin rubber just so uh, the battery doesn't vibrate around and make a noise against the wood and the other batteries. 
It is safe to mount lithium batteries in any orientation because they don't have any liquid inside of them. But if you're using any other type of battery, you may not want to mount them in this way. You can see that's a really nice tight fit. It's not gonna be moving around at all. And uh, now we can take the straps, tighten these down. And uh, I'll cut the excess off here and then we can take a lighter and just light the edge. That'll keep the edge from fraying. Okay, now I can start screwing in all the different pieces of equipment. This is the charge controller. You wanna have everything as close together as possible so there's less loss with longer wires. The inverter comes with these little shockproof pads which uh, just slide into the track like this so there's a little bit of rubber above and below the, the screw. So that should look like that and now I can just screw that straight into the wood. Next we're going to install the fuse block. And this should be perfect right here above the wires that are coming out. Next, I'm going to add a 100 amp breaker for the battery cable coming from the vehicle's battery for the alternator charging. So this comes to right here, and I'll add the breaker right here on an angle like that so that I can also extend the wire from here to the charge controller right there. Okay, I think I have my final setup here. I'll go over this in uh, more detail once I have everything connected. But we've got our inverter, charge controller, 12 volt fuse box, positive bus bar, negative bus bar, two breakers here. There'll be a 250 amp fuse here, which I'm waiting for. It should be delivered tomorrow. The batteries will be connected in parallel as opposed to series, which means we're just gonna connect positive to positive, positive to positive, and then negative to negative, negative to negative. We'll have one thick cable going through the 250 amp fuse, coming through, connecting to the negative, I mean the positive bus bar, and then on the opposite end of the battery bank, the negative cable will come through, connect to the negative bus bar. From here we'll have another thick positive cable going to the inverter, and from the inverter, the negative to the negative bus bar. From the charge controller, it's going to come out the positive, connect to this 70 amp breaker. The breaker will connect directly back to the battery bank here. We've got our positive and negative coming from the alternator, which will go through this 100 amp fuse, which will then connect to the charge controller here. And the negative side here will connect to the negative bus bar. The solar cable, positive and negative, will connect here for negative, here for the positive. And the fuse box, we can run a line. There's the uh, negative and positive, and we can run a line to the two bus bars for that. While I'm waiting for the 250 amp fuse to come, I think I'll start connecting some of the 12 volt accessories and cutting the wires down and connecting them to the fuse box. They won't actually be connected to any sort of power even once I even once I connect the battery to the fuse box until you put a fuse into the fuse panel here. So even if this has power here, I could still connect here without power. It won't won't be a problem until I put the fuse in. So I figure I can make these connections now. 
since I won't be putting any fuses in yet. So if you followed along, you know I told you guys to mark all of your wires so you know which is which here. So this is gonna be the front fan. Now we can just cut this wire down the size like this and we'll connect the positive to one of the fuse terminals here and then the negative up here to one of the negatives so we can cut a lot of this extra wire away. To make the connection, you're going to want one of these little kits and I'll have a link in the description for these DC wire connectors. So you have a lot of different options here. So these blue ones are going to be the perfect size for the speaker wire. So I've cut the negative down to exactly where I want it. So now we just have to strip the insulation off and uh, if you don't have one of these Klein wire strippers, I'd recommend get one. I'll put a link for these. Works so much better than the uh, cheap wire strippers. This thing's really good. Just line your wire up where it goes and then just pull it. Strips it perfectly every time. Now we can just take one of the terminal connectors, stick the wire, make sure you get it inside the little hole in there. So once you have it in the hole, you just take a normal crimper. See, these are the crappy old fashioned wire strippers. These don't work as good, but they are good for crimping. Nice crimp, check your connection, make sure it's not pulling out. Now you can take your lighter and melt the heat shrink. And we can now connect it to the fuse box. Kind of want to hold the wire so it comes out straight out. That way we can organize all the wires later on. Now just check the length of the positive side and we're gonna have to cut that just a little bit. Use your uh, snips to make these cuts right there. Now for the positive wire, this is gonna connect where the fuses are. We're not putting the fuses in yet. We're just making the connections right now. That's gonna be your first connection right there. And now just go through all the different wires and repeat it. And I'm going to get my label maker and I'll mark right here front fan you want to make sure you do this while you're going so you can keep track of uh, which wire is which so I'll go grab my label maker and we'll put front fan here and then I just have to go through all the rest of these wires make all the connections I'll put a link for this label maker as well Still waiting on the delivery from Amazon to finish the solar system. So I think I'll take this time now to connect all the outlets and switches. Not gonna go over how to wire those. If you're connecting a solar system, hopefully you already know how to do that. If not, there's plenty of YouTube videos on that. If you don't know basic wiring, this might be too complex to try to tackle this whole thing on your own. All the outlets are in and pro tip, Make sure all your screw heads are facing up and down like that. If you ever look at the way a professional electrician installs outlets, it's always like that. Not facing all different directions or sideways or anything like that. Keep it neat. For the AC power, I have all of the outlets coming to this one Romex wire. And on the end of it, I can install this plug. This just unscrews and you just connect the positive, negative, and the ground. And then that plug will plug right into the inverter. And also if you're somewhere where you want to plug in to shore power, you could always unplug this and plug this into an extension cord. I'm also going to install this Renergy battery monitor. I really like this one. And it's pretty easy to install. It comes with this shunt, which will connect to the negative battery wire where it says B minus. It'll go through the shunt, that's where it's going to read all the battery information. And then from here, we'll connect another wire going to the negative bus bar. 
should be a good spot for it because it'll also hold the negative battery cable tight against the wall here so it's not flapping around on the way up to the negative bus bar. And then it has two other connections. Right here, there's going to be a small positive cable that'll screw into this little terminal here. And there's a little wire that plugs into here, which will go to the actual battery monitor wherever you're going to place that. Cutting these big cables is pretty straightforward. You just mark where the end of uh, the lug comes to. And then you can go around it with a razor blade knife. Make sure you don't cut any of the copper strands. Just go deep enough to get through the rubber. And once you get it pretty much there, just twist it. It kind of keeps everything looking good. Put the lug on. Make sure you get everything inside. That. Now this goes here. Yeah, that's good. Tight. here make sure the terminal is not going to come into contact with the rubber you don't want it like that or anything just right about there and then we'll use the lighter clean connection here. I've already got the first negative one on. This one's going to go from here to here. And then you can just cut these wires with uh, a pair of snips. So now I've got this at seven and a half. I'll just take off a little bit here, put another lug on it, and it should connect right there. So I'm wiring in this uh, main shutoff switch to allow me to turn off the battery if I ever need to work on anything. And it's pretty simple to wire in. Just like that. And then this will get screwed to the wall. Here's a 250 amp fuse. And from the other end of this, we'll go directly to the battery be a fuse in the middle of these two bolts. Almost everything's connected now. The only, one of the two last things to connect now is going to be the solar cables coming from the panels, the two cables. So I have to kind of route them the way I want them. The positive will connect here, the negative here. And inside the charge controller box, they provide you with the terminal connections that will crimp onto the end of the solar cables. I went ahead and put a big blanket over the roof so the panels won't produce any power in the wires. So I'm going to completely cover up the panels up here. That way there won't be any power coming through the wires while, while I put the terminal connections on. Okay, I have the two solar cables cut down the length. I have the terminals on there and I just put a little piece of rubber on there to protect the connection so it doesn't touch anything while I'm working on this. So before you connect the solar panels, that's the last thing you're going to do actually. First we're going to make sure the battery's connected, working properly on the charge controller. So I'll flip this switch here and that's going to supply power to this. And I checked that it's already working actually. And for the charge controller, when I flip this breaker here, that should power the charge controller. So let's see if it works. Nice, very good. 
this is showing the battery has a normal charge. This green light here, we need to change to a blue light since we have lithium batteries. And you can do that just by pushing this button here on the side. There's a little tiny button. Right there. And when you push that until we get a blue button. So now it's blue. That's perfect. And uh, I think it looks like it's blinking on the camera, but um, in real life it's not blinking. Battery's connected and everything's showing good here. We can connect first the negative, then the positive. I've got the two solar cables connected here now. And uh, this one just connects directly through the top where the opening on the little uh, cover is. This one didn't want to lay flat with the negative cable going to the bus bar, so I put it out the side. It um, lines up a lot better that way. This little cover only has a hole at the top for the wire. So I'll just uh, take my Dremel and I'll just notch for this wire here so that that'll still fit, fit on there like that. That's no big deal. And the other side should go right on like that. So now when I remove the blanket from the roof, this light should light up that we're getting some, some solar charge. Very good, this is what you want. A solid red light means it's bulk charging. And if we look at our battery monitor, it shows we're bringing in 11.3 uh, amps, 11.4. Charging at 155 watts, it's still increasing, that's great. So you'll notice that um, this is showing 100%. Once this reaches full voltage, I'll need to recalibrate this and set it at 100%. So when you first turn this on, it's going to show 0%. So I'll show you what it'll look like when you first turn it on. It'll look like this when you first turn it on. So to calibrate it, you just hold the up arrow, arrow button for 3 seconds. And then it'll show 100%. So we'll just need to wait till this 13.4 reaches, I believe it's 14.2. When it reaches full voltage, then we'll just recalibrate it again with the up arrow. So when you first turn it on, you can hold the left arrow button for three seconds. That'll bring you into the main menu and then you can set how many amp hours you have on your battery. So I have three batteries that are 100 amp hours, so I set it to 300 amp hours. But once this is charged, we'll uh, reconnect everything. So now that we're charging with solar, we can uh, start putting our fuses in and finally get the fan turned on in here and cool things off. It's gonna be nice. The battery monitor is also gonna come with a couple other cables. Uh, this red one is if you have a smart alternator like on the uh, Mercedes, the newer Mercedes Sprinters. The Dodge doesn't have it, so we won't need that cable. Won't need this one either. Looks like a telephone cable. This one you're gonna need. This is a battery temperature sensor. So this just plugs in right here where it says BTS, battery temperature sensor. And then you can run that cable along here down to your negative terminal of your batteries and just zip tie that right on there. Once I connect that, I can put the cover on this side. Here's the battery temperature sensor, just running through here, have it coming down. I just kind of zip tied the extra wires together and I have it zip tied right here to the negative terminal. So if this gets too hot, it'll let the charge controller know. I have this little box of all different fuse sizes. I'll put a link for this and everything else in this video. So now that everything's connected, I should be able to just put the fuses in and everything should start working. So you just push right in like that. So as soon as you do that, you'll hear the, um, I've already done it, but as soon as you plug it in for the first time, the fan will automatically close. Um, but you'll see it's, it should be working now. It's pretty cool to have.
And of course we can use this on the remote as well, but I think we'll uh, just use this for now. So now I'm up here in the front of the van. And if you remember, we had these wires pre-run for the alternator charging. So now it's time to connect them. Now that I've got everything set up, I've got the positive here and the negative here. And I've already started unscrewing this, so I'm just gonna unscrew this, connect this underneath it like that. And then same with the positive. Remember to have the breaker for the alternator charging in the back shut off while you're doing this. Once we're connected, we'll go back there and we'll flip the uh, breaker. Okay, this is all connected and uh, remember if you have a smart alternator like on the Mercedes newer Sprinter vans, you would need an additional wire running up here connecting to a fuse that only turns on when the engine's on. Uh, but since this is a regular alternator, we don't need that. You can see now this is lit, so the alternator charging is also working. Uh, the solar batteries are actually full now, so the solar is actually charging the vehicle battery. So tonight I can test this if I run the, the batteries down a little bit, we can turn the engine on and make sure if it's charging the system. But right now there's sun out, so we're basically fully charged. So can't really test if it's gonna charge the batteries right now, the solar batteries, but it seems like everything's working great. Just doing a test run at night and uh, turned on the vehicle engine and you can see it's uh, charging at 15 amps, 13 amps. So alternator charging is working. So right now I'm going to mount the battery monitor screen and the remote control for the inverter. So I'm going to run the wires back through here. I'll drill uh, through the wall, maybe right here. And um, I removed the panel for the shower. So then I can bring it through here. I'll have the uh, battery monitor right here and the remote for the inverter right here. So just need to drill a hole big enough for the battery monitor cable to go through. I've got this bit here, it should work out nicely. takes uh, four screws in the corners. Everything's connected now and working, so let me show you a brief overview of how I connected everything. Basically, we have two solar wires coming in from the roof from the solar panels. And if you missed how I wired the, or mounted the solar panels and wired them, uh, that is on episode two, I'll link that below but you have the negative solar cable coming in right here to the charge controller and the positive solar cable coming in right here to the charge controller. From there, we have a four gauge wire going through this 70 amp breaker going directly to the battery positive. I have the batteries wired in parallel, which will keep it as 12 volt. If you go in series, it'll be 24 volt. So um, connect the positive to the positive to the positive, and that's with a two watt wire. Negative to the negative, negative to the negative. You have to take the positive from one end of the battery block and the negative from the other end of the battery block. That's very important. The positive comes out here through this 250 amp fuse goes through here into this switch. From the switch, 
it goes to the positive bus bar. There'll be a cover for the bus bar. And from the bus bar, I've got a two watt cable going to the inverter and another one going to the fuse bo uh, box for the DC power. For the negative lines, I've got the negative line coming from the battery box here and going through this shunt, which uh, powers the battery monitor up here. And there's a tiny little positive cable here from the shunt just to power it, uh, which connects here to the positive side. So the negative goes to the negative bus bar and that doesn't need to get covered. You can see I covered all of the positive leads of the uh, battery so we don't have any short circuits so from the negative bus bar it goes to the inverter also goes from the bus bar to the fuse box another wire here going from the bus bar to the charge controller and I also have the alternator charging so I have the negative and the positive, you can see it under there, coming from the front of the vehicle. And the positive goes through this 100 amp fuse, I have it turned off right now. And from the fuse, it, uh, excuse me, breaker, not fuse, from the breaker it goes to the charge controller where the alternator connects. And the vehicle negative just connects to the bus bar right here. For all of my AC power with the outlets, I have all the outlets connected to this one yellow Romex wire, which comes through here. And I connected a plug to the end of it. And that just plugs in like this, right into the back of the inverter. So when I turn the inverter on, it's on now. This, this controls it. When I turn the inverter on, all of the outlets should work. I've got this uh, light connected here just to test the outlets. That works. And this one here, I put on a switch in the front so I can plug the water heater into that. So I connected it to this switch here. So when I flip this switch, I can turn the water heater on. So you'll see that'll uh, make that light work. And now it's off. So this is where the water heater will get connected real close to the shower. So for all the DC appliances, you just connect it through the fuse box here. Super simple to wire. Let me pop the lid off and I'll show you. All of the positives connect to any of these terminals here. They won't get power until they have a fuse in them. All of the negatives connect up here to any of these. I have the uh, inverter grounded to the fuse panel and the whole system is grounded through the vehicle's uh, negative that comes up to here. So if you follow that all the way up to the front of the vehicle, that the uh, negative terminal it's connected to is grounded to the chassis so the whole system's grounded to the chassis and that's it we've got power everything's working perfectly it's a super easy uh, simple system that i think pretty much anyone could do if you guys have any questions on anything i did here just go ahead and leave a comment i do respond to all the comments if you need me to go in more depth on anything else that I did here, just let me know in the comments and if enough people would like it, I'll make another video on it. I did use uh, three batteries on this build because I'm going to be using an induction cooktop and an electric water heater. But all of my previous builds, I've always just used the two Battleborn batteries. That was more than enough because I had a propane water heater and a propane cooktop and it's possible you might even be able to do my setup with two batteries, but I like to um, make sure 
power will never be an issue. So I went with three here. These are pretty expensive batteries, but I really feel they're the best batteries you can buy. If you ever have an issue, they're really good about replacing them. Click on the link in the description below. I'll have every single item here listed and just a couple clicks, you can copy this whole setup. Super simple, easy to do, and everything just works. It's great. That's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you guys got something good out of this. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Next episode, I'll probably be starting on building the bed frame. Things should be getting pretty close to being finished after that. Thanks a lot for watching.